Here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Weird Boom Indie Comics Podcast, or the Boom Weird, whichever way you want to do this. I am Jim, and I'm here with my man Rocky from the Comic Boom Channel. What up, Rocky? Uh, yeah. Well, what up? Uh, I'm I'm happy. Uh, the second week in a row here that uh, we're consistently reviewing some indie comics, all issue uh, issue ones for me. Uh, so. It's pretty good. It's 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 a nice change from uh, doing f- with at least with me doing DC all the time. So exactly, yeah, and me doing DC Marvel and the <laughs> manga. Even though I said I warned you last week that I was going to slip in some manga, I thought it was going to be more down the road. It's going to yeah. be tonight because we'll talk about something that I was glad you actually told me a little behind the scenes that you did like it enough. So that got me all excited. But it's kind of your dip your toe into the manga world of things as well, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's actually my first manga comic that I've uh, ever read, to be quite honest. And uh, I've heard a lot about manga, and and I'm glad I did. And it is, uh, you know, a spoiler alert. It is actually my favorite of the three that we're going to be reviewing this week. Yeah, so, that's crazy, uh, right? Yeah. So it's uh, not the other two were decent enough, but no, the yeah, the, yeah, Chainsaw Man, a crazy name, but an interesting title, and uh, yeah, <laughs> um, be it fun is. Talking about and- it. Obviously, this is for the week of July 13th as we do these books. And we have been since we just started this. And this is the second week, as you said. And we're going to go more to number ones when we end up, you know, grabbing some things at first. Then we said this last week, we'll end up continuing on in some of these things as we go, as we kind of lay the base down with stuff and whatnot. So the two that we have, and it, I'd like to mix it up, and I'm, I'm sure you would as well. The two that we're doing, though, besides the manga, are Image Comics. It's not just because we're going to center on just Image. I know that that could be something that people you know, might end up doing because there are some big books coming out. It just happened that two of the number ones were coming out from Image, and I, uh, I, I like them enough. I, when we get into these, uh, but like you said, Chainsaw Man, when we get to that, and there's a reason why, and there's kind of a behind the scenes reason why I asked you to read it and we picked it for this week that we'll talk when we get to that. But I didn't know anything about Impact Winner or Above Snakes before picking them. It was just number ones. We're throwing it together. H- did you know anything about them? Uh, no, I, I I knew nothing about them, and and like you, I was actually surprised about Impact Winter, as uh, as we'll talk about it. It's actually an, it started off, I guess it's an audio, it's an audible uh, audio podcast as well, as yeah. so, which is quite interesting. And uh, Travis Beecham, the writer, has uh, does have some history. I think he co wrote uh, producer of The Walking Dead, and he's got he's got quite a background, and and I think some of yep. his experiences. I think shows in the writing, which I, I thought was uh, was was actually pretty good uh, for. Uh, yeah, I, and we'll start with that, right? And it, he also did some Pacific Rim stuff like that as well. And yeah, I, I agree. It's one of those where not even knowing what was happening or what it was about by the end when I did end up looking, because at the end there's like a, a little letter from him and he's talking about things. And he says, hey, I, I hope that people who listen to the podcast enjoyed this as a prequel of podcast. And so I went and looked it up. I'm like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. And the the weird play is, is that he may have hooked me a little in that backwards backdoor way, because if this was more for people who already listen, I'm actually, actually intrigued enough by this prequel to maybe even check out an episode or two of the audio drama, just to see how well it was done and whatnot. Uh, but it's okay. Impact Winner number one, written by Travis Beach and with art by Stephen Green and Matt Hollinsworth, obviously published by Image Comics on July 13th today as we record for $4.99. And I just here's the solicit. It's been one year since a comet hit Earth and blotted out the sun. Now the world is a dark, cold landscape ruled by vampires. In the British countryside, a band of survivors was formed a resistance in the fallout shelter of a medieval castle. Among them is Darcy, a young, headstrong fighter waiting for the chance to prove she can be, uh, you know, on the front lines. But when that opportunity comes, Darcy will come to face to face with the true horrors of this new world. From creatives, creators Travis Beecham, Pacific Rim, and artist Stephen Green, Hellboy, and BPRD. So that's pretty cool. Comes the prequel to the hit audible drama original and that's the thing when i ended up you're going through this and i knew it was a one shot at least i knew that so as i was reading it i started thinking like how is this going to tie up well enough 
that I'm satisfied by the end and then finding out it was a prequel to the audible drama, then I realize, okay, I get it now because there are some things in this that I actually want to see more of, especially Darcy, the lead character, because they're hinting at things of how much bigger and better that she probably is in this, almost like a little Buffy vibe, especially with the vampire deal. Uh, I actually was shocked. I don't know about you. When you go into this and you start with this whole, you know, a comet hits. It's not a nuclear winter, but it's very similar to it. A comet hits pretty much like what happened with the dinosaurs. There is this winter going on planet wide. And when vampires popped up, I was <laughs> I was actually shocked. I did not know or think this was going to be a vampire deal. I thought it was yeah. going to be more of a survival, post-apocalyptic survival type thing. So I was shocked. Yeah. But well, how about it's, you? Uh, I would just add to that. Uh, Trevor Beecham, in his comments at the end of the at the end of the one shot, he makes he makes the commentary that he actually alludes to that because he said that it, he said uh, most people think it's it when they start reading this, you, you're thinking 28 days later because you're thinking the comet mm-hmm. led to the vampires. And it's kind of a 28 days later kind of story, but it ends up being more of a Brown Stoker's Dracula because, you yeah, because there's it's even though the comet creates this impact winter, it's it's the vampires have already existed. So while we're, we're thinking maybe sci fi, but yet it does, as you read it, have more of a traditional vampire hunter kind of feel to it, which is very interesting. So he was right by making those two uh, allegories. I, I agree. And and it's funny, too, because as you're going through this one shot, you almost have at the back of your mind at points like, OK, are they going to show us that? Like, how do vampires cause a comet? They're like, yeah. that doesn't make sense. And thank God they don't even try it. And yeah. even in that, you do even have characters mention, you know, Bram Stoker and even bring that up, the idea of it. But I, I like the idea without me or you r- listening to that audible drama there. I ended up liking the characters and I thought that the character work was pretty good. And it was one of those where he gets you up to speed pretty quick. You end up not having too many characters to worry about. That's one of the other things that some people tend to do. That's a mistake. And you get a connection with Darcy, especially because the first thing you see is she's out and about and she's trying to find something for her little sister. She's talking about her family having been dead how her mom she promised her before she died and a lot of the things going in don't necessarily mean dead by vampires either she even says her dad died even before this comet and i thought in a play where they're in this mansion felt a little bit like it was playing around with the pandemic even the you know the shutdown where they are they have to stay inside and his her sister hasn't even seen the sky for a year. I, I thought that it was well played out. I, I got up to speed with the rules because they're just vampire rules. And that's what I also like. You said it's like the Bram Stoker deal. It's like a classic vampire tale. You just happen to have a comet make it so that they can walk around and do whatever they want. But you don't change too many things. You don't need to explain too many. They're vampires and you go in. But I did like it. And I like the way that some of these scenes, even seeing as the vampires, they bury the people who they're going to turn and they're going to come up. And that causes Darcy some problems. And you see right away, she's not really ready to be out and about but, you know, she is. She's trying to be on the front lines, as it's said. So I think that she's a pretty tough, you know, lead character. And I thought that was well played. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. And uh, I should say, uh, one of the things, I never discovered what her last name was in this. I, I think I found out when I read the the in the back. But her last, she's got a cool last name, too. It's it's Dunraven. So Darcy Dunraven. Yeah. So it's kind of a cool name. I always love alliterations like that. because uh, I do, too. Yeah, and I love her. Uh, she's got a... Uh, one of her co-stars or fellow uh, vampire hunters here is a guy by the name of Godwin. Uh, her sister's name is Hope. There's this Gypsy, Jepson character. He's a former yep. MI6 operative. He's sort of like the father figure. He's sort of training her. There's something special about Darcy. She, there, and, and most people notice that she has a light within her. And maybe mm-hmm. it's it, it's definitely has... has it does have some Buffy vampire uh, slayers uh, vibes, which I think you alluded to. And mm-hmm. uh, there's even a hints of a, of a love interest here with this Godwin character. And, you know, you can, it when you, when it's confirmed at the end that this is a prequel, you really get that. It makes so much sense because it's, it this, this, it, because it, you know, because I'm kind of looking forward to, I was surprised at how much I actually enjoyed this because on the one hand, it kind of felt, I thought, well, at first I thought, is this going to be kind of predictable? And yet 
it's yeah. the character work. It's the character work that saves this for me in a way that really surprised me. And and it didn't surprise me at all to hear that Travis Beecham does have some experience producing The Walking Dead because The Walking Dead is a TV show. I mean, it, what makes that show is the character work. It's and you, the I think you can, you, yeah, you can see kind of some of his experience that he brings that to this comic and to to really great effect because you know you could I could really feel Darcy's emotions as she ultimately ends up having to you know confront uh her 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 good her fellow vampire hunter godwin who ends up unfortunately becoming a vampire and uh, uh of course her her interactions with her younger sister uh and just uh, just her her just the the rapport uh the dialogue's very good uh the the art artist uh, art by Stephen Green I think really works here uh mm -hmm. the, the coloring uh by Matt Hollingsworth uh, is uh, is excellent. I think Hollingsworth does a lot of the coloring on. Uh, uh, doesn't he do the coloring on uh, Sean Gordon Murphy's? Yes. Yep. Uh, yeah, I believe he does the yeah, White Knight stuff. And, yeah, and, White Knight and, 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 yep, and yep, World yep. Design is the letterer. Uh, this this really all comes together quite well here. This is actually an A list team of. Uh, it is of, of writers like a, here. It, it's like a surprise. Like yeah. I didn't know anything about it, and then when you really look into it. And when you say about The Walking Dead, you're dead on. Now, I'm more of a fan and do the podcast on a comic book Walking Dead deal. But again, that extends to the TV show as well, where it is that thing where people who pish posh that end up pish. Oh, I don't need zombies. I mean, a young Eric Shea said the zombie craze was over, not realizing that that book really hinges on the characters, not the zombies. The zombies are there that sets up the conflict and it becomes more of even down to the point of who's more dangerous zombies or humanity. Now this ends up, like you said, though, if you really, you know, say, okay, what are the actual set pieces? What are the actual scenes? There's not that many, but it's more of the character work that drives it. And you end up by the end, like I said, and I'll even say it more when we get to the manga at the end. I think that what a lot of times, you know, Western comics especially doesn't they don't get is if you are behind the characters, you'll go off to any story they're in. That is a solid base. If you are intrigued by the characters and like the interactions, the story then can progress from that and you will follow them more because that's what you really get attached to the characters. And you do get attached to, you know, Darcy here and you you play with the tropes and the cliches of, you know, she's a young girl. She wants to fight. I mean, you even get like a little Mulan in this. You, you get the, yeah. like you said, Vampire Slayer, <laughs> Buffy stuff. You get all that. Even with that, I thought that uh, Jepsen, he reminds me of the Earth One Alfred Pennyworth. Even with the MI6. And he feels yeah. like almost like an Alfred. In yeah, he this does. As well. yeah. And so I, I really like that idea. And I sometimes that's something that really gets me is the idea when somebody can grab something that has the familiarity of a bunch of different ingredients, but when you put it together, it's something new. So you don't have to have too much of a setup. You don't have to explain too much. Like I said about the vampires, pretty much the same rules. It's very quick. You know, you can stab them in the heart. You don't need wood. Anything will do. I think that might be a play of at some point, maybe a lot of the wood and trees are all going to die and then you really don't have it around. So that allows you to keep going. I don't know. But, you know, you, you behead them. That's the big deal. OK, you set it up. I'm in. And you do introduce the characters and you like them. Even Godwin, when you're introduced to him. It's very quick, but you do kind of get a connection through Darcy with that, even as they're kind of making out, they're smooching yeah. <laughs> and, and they, they go off. And it is a shame because he ends up going off. And, and like you said, he gets turned, but everybody kind of leaves him behind. You have that play of, well, they're done. If, if they're not here, we have to forget about them. This is how you would be doing it in a post-apocalyptic vampire war. You can't just go and run and get anybody. But. Darcy, that's what makes her special. And they keep saying, like you said, Jepson says there's something about her. She's going to rule the world. You even have vampires see her differently as somebody with this weird, you know, aura and energy. And she doesn't know it, though. That's what I like. She's not aware of that. So that makes her it's not like she's pompous or going off to do things because she oh, I'm better. She's just trying to do her thing yeah. and she doesn't realize how special she is. And I, I do and, like that. A and lot. that that and that fact is reinforced at the end, which uh, the final two pages really intrigued me because what what I believe are the 
sort of the villains or the antagonists yeah. of the piece, this Rook and Finn character, this female character named Finn, Finn it, I think is, I'm getting the impression, is one of the leaders of this vampire clan and this, this Rook character. And Rook almost talks about, uh, again, talks about how this, he comments about Darcy being special, being different. And I, I kind of like how they're playing... Uh, it's not immediately apparent to me that that Rook and Finn, who are the antagonists, that they're necessary. They don't come across like evil or bad guys, and yet no. clearly, I'm assuming they are. And I got to admit, we're we're coming to this a little bit backwards because apparently there's an entire <laughs> audio yeah. story behind this. But I'm actually intrigued, and what I'm I really like about that this, we don't know that. I'm liking yeah. that we can read this and actually come up with theories, yeah. not knowing what exactly. the deal is. I, yeah, yeah, I think that's cool. Uh, uh, one of the things, too, like you said, just quick before you go on, yeah. the idea that they don't feel like the, that feels very much Bram Stoker Dracula. I mean, you end up where if you end up reading, you know, Bram Stoker Dracula or some of the other like gothic heart, like that is more subtle than, you know, zombies or vampires running around and kind of having, you know, rave parties like in Blade. It's not like that. Yeah. It's very much the lineage. The It's like aristocracy, the way they play it out. And that's how they came across to me. They came across as kind of like, you know, a little bit of royalty there. And at the end, I did like it because the idea that Godwin, he was able to keep his own face. You end up having this Rook character who turned him said, well, we were going to have him go back. He was yeah. going to be our spy. He was going to check him out. And then when Finn says, oh, you know, that's the problem with some that they keep their wits and all that about them. They end up having their own ideas. I think that she's also reminding Rook to mind his, you know, P's and Q's. I think that she might be also because she says she turned him. And I think it's like, yeah, you better, you know, watch yourself. Because even when he's looking out, he, he looks forlorn. He's like the vampire looking out the window as it's raining. He looks yeah. sad, the sad vampire. Yeah. But I did like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. And uh, what's what's interesting about this is that I, I would say to anyone listening uh, to the podcast or watching this, if they're watching it on YouTube, is yeah. the great thing about this is that you can actually just click on the QR code. You can just Google Impact Winner. And even if you don't want to buy the comic, you can actually go and actually for, I think it's a couple bucks, you can listen to the first uh, audio audible of okay. this uh, story, which neither you and I have done yet. But it's, no. uh, I, I like the option here. And I think it's I, th I think it's I really like right creators like this. I think outside the box that that, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's not just comic books, but it's 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 something else as well. I it's mean, because a lot of be, things. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I like it and I'm intrigued enough and. What a compliment to say that I have a sneaking suspicion that hopefully the people on the Audible will pick up the comic. But picking up the comic, I'm I one of the things I I certainly plan to do sometime this week if I find some find the time is I'll you know I'll pay the few bucks and listen to the Audible uh, exactly. story as well. So and it's funny I'm I'm with you a hundred percent and. I will tell you that I'm actually liking this more and more as we're talking about it, too. I'm getting a little excited about it. And now what I like what you said about having it connect with the, you know, Audible deal. That's what something that I really, really thought was cool. And it's it's something that's a little passe now. But when I first saw it, I first saw it with, again, Buffy, where they were continuing the series in the comics. Now, a lot of things do that now, like I said, but when I first saw that, I thought that was the coolest thing. Like, oh my God, you know, a series gets canceled. You can end up having a comic. There is no budget. You don't have to, and you could do the sky's the limit. I always thought that that was cool. And I think that this is kind of a cool deal too. And it makes sense to make it a prequel because if we ended up in this was like the end, all of a sudden we wouldn't know what's going on. So it wouldn't serve us well, but because it's a prequel, we're kind of in and we're going to go check it out. What would you give it? Uh, I'm, uh, you know, like you, I'm, <laughs> I, I was inclined to give this uh seven and a half, but talking with you, I'm, I'm actually more excited about it now uh, yep. because it's connected um, to the, uh, to a, the audible uh, podcast. But so mm -hmm. I'd go, I'll, I'd go 8.5. I'll be nice. Give it. Yeah. I think 5. I'm going to go 8.5 as well. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, I think I was originally like a seven, eight. Maybe an eight. I do like the art. I do like the, the setup. But yeah, by the end, and I said, while I was reading it, I'm looking, I know, you know, how long it, it's about. And I'm like, I must be near the end. So what's going on? Because is this the whole story? And I expected by the end, it was just going to be, this may continue. Down, like, hey, if it sells, we'll do a trade, whatnot. But finding out that it was something I could listen to on Audible, I actually did and, and well served here 
to get the characters and kind of get behind them. Because again, to me, that's why you go and want to hear more of the story, these characters and whatnot. So I thought that was really well done. So yeah, eight, five from both of us. It's a shock. <laughs> it, I'm telling you, it actually did better. Hopefully we'll end up thinking the same thing with the next one, which is above snakes. Number one, chapter one, it says it's called Speck of Dirt. This issue, it's written by Sean Lewis with art by Hayden Sherman, lettering by Hassan Atsamane El Hua. And in the solicit of this, this is not an audible drum, so we don't have to worry about that. But it is a mini series premiere. It says the hit team behind the few and thumbs returns with an all new wild as hell mini series. Writer Sean Lewis, King Spawn, artist Hayden Sherman, Wasted Space, and rock star letterer Hassan Atsami El Hua. I didn't know he was a rock star letter. Introduce <laughs> a world where Deadwood style westerns collide with the fantasia of Neil Gaiman in the story of Dirt, a man seeking vengeance for his murdered wife with nothing but a talking vulture to prod him on. Above Snakes' is Fast and Furious explosion of Western tropes and American vengeance that explores where our rage can take us. I'll tell you right now, if you ended up just wanting to check this out, you can look at it as almost a one-shot. You do get a complete story in this. It will continue on as Dirt, our main character, continues on himself. But you could just check in here, enjoy it, and get out. I enjoyed it. I, I thought that it was pretty good. It ended up surprising me as I went on because at first I was a little bit confused. I was trying to get my bearings straight, whatnot. And it is a basic story. But by the end, I'm reading it twice, actually, I ended up liking it more even the second time that I read it. There's some awful people in it, though. I mean, this is not like a nice tale. And yeah. so when you get into it now, and, and it's funny, too, because at the beginning in the first scene, I actually thought that the art looked a bit like like a, a Daniel Warren Johnson art, but it ends up changing a bit. And I do I do like the art it's stylistic. I do like that. Again, this is a little different than what we just saw, that the character is kind of like that, you know, drifter. We learn enough about him to get his motivation to get going, but he really is driven by one thing, and that's revenge for his wife being killed. And I can go with that in this issue. Like I said, maybe if you keep going, maybe I'll need a little bit more, but I like this enough. Uh, how about you? Well, I, I got to say, uh, you know, I'm a huge Jonah Hex fan, and I got I, I take okay. pride in my... Uh, pride cometh before the fall, but I don't care. I got a. I, I take a lot of pride in my Western uh, DC comic and Marvel mm. collection. I love Jonah Hex, and I'm used to Western tropes, and I generally like them. I thought, uh, but but I have to say, even when I I recall fondly, um, you know, my just Jimmy Palmiotti J Jonah Hex run, yeah. run uh, and there's a lot of tropes in there, but there's always a hook. So even if Jimmy Palmiotti would write a, another revenge tale with Jonah Hex, there was always a hook. There was something different with each story, and I got to say here. I don't, I was actually a little bit disappointed here. I only because, first of all, let me, let me, let me have a little bit of fun with this. The bird, yeah. this is a guy that his name is Dirt. First of all, I'm wondering yeah. why is his name Dirt? Now yeah, I can't, yeah. and it's funny. And he wakes up in the desert and he starts talking to this bird and the bird's name is Speck. And, and the yeah. title to the story is called Speck of Dirt. And I don't know why I find that absurd, but it, the title, yes. actually, the story is actually called Speck of Dirt. The dirt bird's name is Speck. The guy's name is Dirt. It's a revenge tale. They wander through the desert. The bird that he's hallucinating seeing is either a spirit of vengeance, is either mm -hmm. maybe a demon or maybe an angel of death guiding him. It's sort of like the crow meets unforgiven, you know? Yeah. And, and he wanders into the town where he's looking for like somebody with a black bandana who's going to give him hints as to where to, he, he can go to find the people that took his wife. Cause this is the tale of dirt and Do Dorothea. Dorothea. Dor Dorothea. Yeah. Dorothea, Dorothea it. Yeah. It's a weird name. I, I'm yeah. telling you, I could go either way. Yeah. And, uh, and then it just, he just goes into the town and he, he kills all the people that deserve to be killed. And then he kind of wanders off and, and that's it. And to make it even more kind of unspecial, He's not even unique. He actually says in this story that everybody in the town, this is 1866. He, he wanders mm -hmm. into a town. This is in the Genesis desert. Uh, and he says, everybody's looking for revenge. Everybody's looking to avenge somebody. The only difference of- Yeah, they have like a little like boys club that they end up yeah. meeting up to with each other. <laughs> it's know. not like they plan it, but they end up each town. is like, oh man, Harry's here. I guess he's still out for revenge. Now with that, I agree 100%. I still liked it a bit, but like I said- 
I think that I look at it as a one shot where I don't know, because like, I agree 100 percent that by the end, I don't think there's enough of a hook for me to watch this over again. The idea of this Dr. Tomb that we see at the beginning, he's there. He's, he looks crazy, like in a luchador mask. He's got a bunch <laughs> of, you know, medicinal miracle cures that you would have another trope of the old West deal. But in that, there's that weird double narration and even the idea that this dirt says, oh, all those things there, those are all my history. And you see little things in the bottles. And I was confused by that. That's kind of intriguing, but not enough, because once we get to the story, you said it gets a little bit generic. It does. I thought that what the play here is, and, and you know, you know, the the wander, the man in black, the idea, a lot of the tropes in a Western deal is that generic, you know, drifter. But. I don't know in this that it doesn't hook you because he's the main character and you throw in spec this bird. That is, again, that's intriguing, wondering what that is. But by the end, you don't really get any hints, really. You just have a pretty basic I'm going into town. I'm going to kill everybody because my wife was killed. And the one thing that he has is. When he went home, he was at in war. You know, you would assume if this is all on the up and up deal, you know, he's in the Civil War. He ends up coming. And that's a very Jonah Hex thing as well. And he comes back. His wife's dead. And he finds these bandanas all around. Uh, and it, it is pretty quick to get to, like, you almost wanted to have more of an investigation here or more of a, hey, let's go through three towns, see what's going on, make things interesting, set some things up. But he kind of just gets right to where he has to go. And the big twist at the end is just a lady who's pretty much sold out her her mute daughter to be a prostitute. It, it really, you're right. I mean, here's the funny thing. I got all excited for the first book when we're talking about. It. You're talking me down here. It's like I'm on the ledge because I did. I did at the end. I wasn't upset. I just ended up like, okay, that was kind of interesting. I guess maybe the play here for me was. Not a lot of Western comics at the moment. So maybe that is, and I'm with you. I do like Jonah Hex. I'm only really familiar with the new 52 Jonah Hex, uh, you know, with Jimmy Palmiotti, Justin Gray, and them doing yeah. it more top, that sort of deal. But yeah. I do like that. Yeah. And it is something a little different here. But I, maybe that's why, because when you start pointing out that there's not really, well, it's I not anything over the top special. And then you really play off the idea that these characters really are just dirt and speck. Yeah. I mean, well, that's, that's yeah, that's right. Dirt, speck of dirt, speck of dirt. And, <laughs> and uh, what's funny is uh, I think what would have worked better for me if, is if I would almost, I wish I'd know if we got more of uh, flashbacks w of, of him experiencing Maybe the emotion of the loss the loss yeah. of his wife or, or the loss. Cause I, I never felt like I connected to this character because it's funny comparing this to impact winner. Uh, in fact, all the, all the comics we're reviewing this week have one very yeah, interesting yeah, thing in similar. common. They're all kind yeah. of tropey a little bit. They deal with yeah. tropey yeah. themes and yet chainsaw man has, I think the best character development uh, and uh, the, the one we just reviewed, uh, Sorry, uh, yeah, impact, impact winner, winner has, impact uh, winner, yeah, sorry. was, was kind of tropey, but had good character development. This one, I didn't feel like I knew that this was just kind of a, he did a lot of talking. He talked with his bird a lot. He told us about, he was out for revenge, True. but it felt hollow to me. It didn't feel like I connected to the character and it. And so, mm -hmm. and I'm not, I don't know if I, I think I lack the uh, ability to exactly articulate why, but it, it just, it just never well, really. I'll, I'll tell you. If you ended up and we go impact winner, if you ended up having Darcy go off, you end up having a connection because if she does die, the setup and we met the the little sister, you have a connection with that. She's there for her, So you have that base of why you're worried about things and why you're behind him. You know, all this, even the idea that our parents died, all that. You don't want that to happen again in this. You're right. Maybe you did need a scene. Maybe you needed something to see how different he is now. Like at that point, maybe the idea was when his wife died, now he doesn't mean anything. And he even goes with the idea, like he doesn't care if he lives or dies. He's there for revenge. If I die doing it, so I'm just dirt. Like you might even want to have that to show where he doesn't feel like he's anything because his wife was so great and he misses yeah. her. But just the idea of I miss my wife and she was killed. You don't really, that is, that's a trope of, of a lot of these things, including yeah. Western. So you kind of like, oh, that, and then it is funny. Why <laughs> did he have it where everybody else in the bar was the same deal? Exactly. Oh, he's there, he's there. They all, they all died. So yeah. it's not even like his, 
his revenge story is interesting enough to be different. He's not it's unique. All the same. He, he's not a unique yeah, character. No. Everyone's the same. Yeah. I thought. I thought one thing that might make him stand out. I I was expecting <laughs> he would be revealed to be dead. Like maybe it was going to go like the crow. Like yeah, maybe he's I, actually too, dead. Actually. Like he woke up in the desert, comatose. And I thought maybe maybe he actually was killed in the desert. And we get a flashback of him being killed, and this and this bird, this speck, is bringing him back to life as a spirit of vengeance. And I thought, well, that's a little bit too close to the crow, and maybe they wouldn't do that. But we don't even get that, so <laughs> I don't know. It's just yeah. Uh, maybe we'll get something. Yeah, and it, you know, and it is kind of crazy the idea when you talk about it because when you look, uh, it's a weird play that the this bird usually you would have like an eagle or it's a vulture. I mean, it, that's already you know, kind of hinting at it, but you're right. It may be. And when the vote, I need blood. He says, I need to feed on blood. Like, okay, what does that mean? And is that the idea that, you know, you got something going on behind that, this imaginary thing that he's thinking of is actually him, you know, needing something. It's, it is odd. Like you said, it is a shame that it does get a little bit more tropey than character work. And then by the end, you kind of just see him. And, and then he's going to get this guy, the guy who's the in charge of this gang, but we don't know anything about that. Like everything seems to be really pushed forward too quickly to really know or get a feel for it. You know, this cobber guy, oh my God, he's risen in this gang. We don't know the gang. We don't know him. And then when he gets there, you know, he ends up pushing him out. He, this guy seems to get castrated, but that's off panel. A lot of the things are, are weird to not really connect. And, you to and the by story, the way, right? it should be mentioned that the bird named Spec is a real sick bird because he asks the bird oh, yeah. how to punish the guy. And the bird says, you know, give him a second butthole. And so, yeah, give him a second butthole. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And even I, I thought the play, too, was there's this guy and maybe he should have been known as just this looney tune. He's going around talking to this imaginary bird. He does violent things. But you don't really get that. And then at yeah. the end, you see very quickly. I mean, the whole story kind of revolves then around this mute prostitute that you see that her mother sold her out because, oh, you're imperfect. You're going to. But it doesn't play out right. It doesn't play like you don't have any emotions of it. Even when you see that reveal, that twist at the end, you're like, oh, OK, whatever. And the people just grab this lady and pull her into this cabin. They're going to kill her. All right. Yeah. And then he walks away. <laughs> And I and then he says at this one point, I'm going to go get that Dr. Toom. I'm going to you don't even get the but like I could say like this guy. Oh, dirt's in town. Trouble's going to happen. Like, he's just wandering around. So, yeah, unfortunately, I think you're right. This might be one that we don't uh, end up revisiting. We'll have to see. Maybe we should give it a couple just to see how it is. But what would you give it then? Uh, well, I'd give this, I'd give it a, I'd give it a 5.7, uh, with, and I will check it back cause I like Westerns and I, I still, I'm still going to give Sean Lewis the benefit of the doubt. I think maybe the hook is still going to come and just that yeah. it didn't arrive this first issue, but a 5.7. That is a tough play though. If you're going to have a hook, you got to hook us in a little bit in that first issue. And I think what he's doing is trying to think that. The over the top. Is it over the top violence? Because a lot of the stuff you don't see. So I, I really don't know. I think the hook is it's a Western. There's not a lot of Westerns. And right now, Westerns, at least TV shows are starting to really make a big comeback. So maybe that is maybe that's the hook. But I think I'm going to go six. I'll go a little bit more positive. I do like the art. Uh, and that's what would get me to a six. But nothing more. You're right. I Originally, I was about a seven thinking it as a one shot hey i come in and out but it is pretty tropey but we'll go to the last book which is the manga a book and it's chainsaw man we're going to do chapter one by tatsuki fujimoto and the reason why i ended up wanting to do this first off i wanted to push you know the the whole deal of manga on you this actually is my first or was my first manga that i read chainsaw man was my first i also Ended up getting Andrew in Belfast. A little shout out to him. It was his first. I suggested it to him and then he became a big fan. But the big reason is it has been on hiatus for a long while. It came back this week. So it ended up coming back. It's now going forward again. So I figured that would be a good reason to do the chapter one with it. And I get to talk to you about manga in the way that did, did you have any sort of learning curve We're going right to left? I mean, that's the biggest thing. <laughs> I, uh, that's obviously the biggest thing for people. But were you OK with it? Uh, I got I got used to it. Uh, I got used to it. It was. uh yeah, it was okay. It was a little bit of a of an adjustment, but it, okay. it was 
it didn't it didn't take long it didn't take long for me to uh to figure it out and uh, I, I i'm telling you i think that and i've said this before to people i think that once you are reading comics you do get into that mode whether right to left or left to right it's more about word bubble progression and panel progression and i think that just being a comic fan and you've been reading tons of comics you already have that down even if you have to reverse it you still will catch up with the idea i think that it would be Hard to go if you haven't been reading much. Then you're really trying to learn, you know, panel progression and things. And there's usually not a lot of panels anyway. But sometimes I think that it's a little less of a learning curve for people who are used to comics. You just have to get used to right to left. What's weird is sometimes you'll end up accidentally reading left to right. And then you'll go three pages and actually think to yourself, I still could follow it. Like, what happened? I was reading it backwards. and it's there. But... I do like this, and I'm glad that you like it, with the idea of a kid, Denji, who is really, you know, he's a sad sack. You feel bad for him. And he ends up meeting and being very nice to a chainsaw dog, demon, devil. And it's great. It's very crazy to try to explain to people what this is about. But you end up having Pachita, who is this devil, devil dog with a chainsaw head. And you have to get in and you really find out that it's more about their interaction, their friendship that ends up winning the day. And it continues as good. But I'll, I'll give it to you because I want to hear what you thought about it and, and what you liked and whatnot. Uh, well, first, what uh, really surprised me here is uh, just as a general comment, I can't believe that uh, this, the black and white doesn't bother me. And yet, yeah. when I read Gotham Central, for example, or Future State Gotham, mm -hmm. it drives me crazy. And I, I, I convinced myself that I just don't like black and white and manga. But here I am reading this, and I realize I don't have any problem with black and white. It really no. does come down to just a good story. And uh, yeah, and I, and I, I frankly, I, I, I really enjoy this. And what, what I wish that the superhero writers, writers of superheroes of the big two, it would appreciate is what this manages to do in the first 60 odd pages that, that I read here, the first chapter essentially. And that is that it, it's, it's actually not decompressed. Now 60 is a lot, 60 pages is a lot, but we, we get so much character work. We get into this, into this kid's head, this devil hunter named Denji and this Pochita dog. And this Pochita is actually, it's a demon dog with a chainsaw mouth. And, and, mm -hmm. and he's actually, he, this kid is, is an obedient kid. He does what he's told. And he, and that's why the Yakuza, why the mafia loves him because they use him to hunt down devils. And, yeah. Yeah. and they, they use him that way. And he's basically, he, he does it to earn a living and he's got to do it because he, he's got to pay off his father's debts. His father is dead, but the mafia is using, using him as their, kind of like their slave. Uh, but they, slowly the debt's being paid down of his father's generation. And, uh, and it's so incredibly heartfelt. And the heart and soul of this story is the relationship that he has with his uh, first of all, his with the chainsaw dog. yeah, with the chainsaw dog, <laughs> Punch, po, uh, yeah. po, Pochito, Pochita. Pochita. Yeah. but also more specifically, he dreams, he dreams of having mm -hmm. bread with jam on it. His dreams are so simple. He dreams of just be, having a girlfriend to hold him. That's it. Yep. He's got, his dreams are so simple. And so, and you, you feel this, you feel his poverty, but yet you feel the love in his heart that he wants to give. But all yeah. he has is this devil dog. And, and it's, man, uh, the, 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 this took such a, a huge turn event. What, what totally threw me and it really had an impact upon me emotionally. I did not shed a tear in this, but, uh, yes. what I, I did really, really love his relationship. Like I, I don't like pets straight up. I don't like okay. dogs or cats. I hate them. Mm -hmm. But I felt his relationship with this stupid looking chainsaw dog. And <laughs> so cute. <laughs> and when he makes the promise, when 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 there's a rumor going around that if you merge that if that that that, that if you feed a devil because you're you're supposed to kill devils, you're not supposed to yeah. have have one as a pet. But uh, there's a in the mythology of this of of this setting, if you uh, if a devil dog or a devil eat gets a hold of your blood. It will, it can uh, essentially merge with you. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's essentially what, what ends up happening. He, 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 he actually tells his dog that, you know, you know, you could, 
if it comes down to it, you can take my body, take over my life, live my dreams for me, live a normal life. He makes that sacrifice for, for a devil because he loves the devil. And the themes here, again, I've said before, I'm a sucker for a good metaphor. The yeah, themes yeah. in this story are just incredible. The idea that it's so symbolic of he's got a dark side and his dark side is this devil. But yet the dark side and the light side come together. It's almost like Jedi and Sith. And they're they're mm -hmm. and they're all combined into one and and even he's got the drawstring once they become merged and he pulls the string and out pops so his chainsaw nose and yeah yeah just and just I'm telling you just a horrific oh my God. chainsaw and and I agree everything about what you said and I I do love this and that's the whole play Yab Denji this character I mean this kid can be pissed off at the world. He could hate everyone. He ends up under debt. His dad committed suicide to get out of a debt from the, the Yakuza, but now it's passed on to him. He ends up, when he goes to the grave, they pull up and say, basically, you need this amount of money tomorrow. We're going to kill you. And then he ends up with that. He meets this Bochita, this devil. Dog. He's hurt. He ends up feeling for him and looks and sees himself. Like you said, that whole light and dark and whatnot. But he sees Pochita as somebody else who's beaten down and hurt. And he's nice enough to end up. But there, it doesn't seem the, the play here, if it was at the end, like, I'm just going to do this because now I can do this or that. He wants a bond. He wants a family. And the dreams that he has. Like you said, he wants jam on toast. That That's his big dream. Like he doesn't sit there and a lot of writers and a lot of comics at, at this point will sit there and go about how, you know, the world's treating the character and the character's angry. And this is only because of this or whatnot. Here's this Denji who's just been kicked around and he still dreams. And they're very simple dreams. He wants to hug a girl. He wants to get jammed. That changes a little. He wants a little more specific body part down the line, <laughs> but it's still, it ends up, he's just a kid who wants to be loved and wants to have a life. And when he does end up, you know, getting some things, these are things that he does appreciate. So you end up behind him. You want him to get some sort of win and he still just gets, and he's obedient, but he's obedient in a way that they treat him like a dog. They even say that, but I love the combo with him and Pochita because as this goes on, and it's very quick, but you get that solid well, base. Well, Pochita, Pochita says to him that I'll give you, Pochita says to him uh, that I'll give you my heart if you show me your dreams. And yep, yep. I love, it's, it's, a, it's a flip, you know, it's a complete, flip of the usual selling your soul to the devil usually the devil approaches you and says yeah, you know yeah. i will give you your dreams but i want your soul but this is different this is the human this is denji an innocent boy saying to a devil yep. look take my soul and you can live your dreams it's giving yeah. to the devil with nothing and he wants nothing in return <laughs> yeah. all he wants is for this devil to, to have a great life it's a completely yeah. selfless act on the part of this it young man complete. and it's and so heroic action, right yeah. yeah and it is heroic and and that's the thing he says he even gives him like tip like listen i'll die you, wait till they bury me then go because he says i hear that devils can take over bodies as well do that but but in that you end up a cheetah also being such a gem that he ends up not just doing that, but he wants to merge and help Denji as well. But also you get that little bit of, okay, there's Denji. He's using a devil to be a devil hunter. The Yakuza see this, but they're not good guys. They end up thinking, oh, well, you know what? Let's do that. This kid, and, and really, legitimately, the only thing that's keeping him with the, uh, is he thinks that he has to pay back this debt. He's afraid. He could actually use Pochita, and they could go and try to kill these Yakuza, and maybe they could get away, but he never thinks of that because he's a good guy. But they're, they're jealous of this and say, if he uses the devils, why can't we? And they go out looking around. Oh, let's find... Unfortunately, they're they're bad guys and find a zombie devil yeah. <laughs> that pretty much ends up making them zombies. And that's them wanting too much. He even says, and the play here was so good when he's there and they take him, they, they set him up. This mm -hmm. zombie devil wants to kill all the devil hunters. Let's kill him. So they get him to this warehouse. And when they are just slicing and dicing him, one of his last thoughts as he's dying is that idea of maybe I asked for too much. Maybe yeah. that jam on toast is too big a dream. Maybe I thought this. 
And it, you're like, no, that's not too big. You're a good guy. Because yeah. he even says, why do the, these Yakuza, these guys, they had all that stuff. Why are they wanting more? And you, you get that idea of, you know, wanting more. And he's, he is heroic at one point. He's also in pieces. I mean, it's, it's funny because we're talking about this and, when you get the character work in a lot of the mangas, the character work's so strong of the characters that you kind of, it's crazy situations. And w like in any sort of, can you imagine if we're reading, say, you know, John Kent, Superboy, Superman, and he is cut into pieces and thrown in the garbage. I mean, you'd be like, <laughs> yeah. oh my God, people lose their mind. But you're yeah. there thinking this and it's like, oh my God, it's so good. Yeah, no, no, I I love it, and there's, and uh, it actually reminded me of a uh, of an expression uh, in in self help circles that um, uh, that one of one of Denji's arguable weaknesses is that he was never very assertive. He was always a kid that did yeah. what he did what he was told, and one thing that that uh, Ponjita Pong, the the devil upon merging with him helps him become there. There's that old expression that says, you know, don't be, don't be passive. Don't convince yeah. yourself that being virtuous and passive is the way to go. No wrong. You should be a monster. You should, we should all be absolute mm -hmm. monsters and then learn how to control it. And that's what he becomes. So in, in the end, he becomes a devil. He merges with the oh, devil, yeah. but he learns how to control it. So he really is like a, a good guy. So he's, he's not above becoming powerful and, ang and angry and even monstrous. And of course, he looks monstrous with the human yeah. looking chainsaw, but he's able to control it. And the ultimate sign of that is at the end when he confronts this 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 secret uh, at the at the end of the first chapter there's this mysterious woman these these women i guess mm -hmm. these people in it's black it's like that it's yeah. two guys and it's like men in black yeah, exactly. they do show up they're an organization yes yeah and it was it was just a nice scene because he talked about wanting to hold a girl before he died uh mm -hmm. and of course he, his last words were uh you know hold me and and she just senses that he's a that this this creature was a good creature and and held him and i thought that was a very touching scene and and mm -hmm. and denji fully expected i believe to die he expected to die oh I yeah think. and now yeah. and uh there was also i don't know if you caught it but early on in the in the, there was a little note at the near the beginning where he mentioned that his mother died he was coughing up yep. blood and his, yeah, his mother coughed, coughed up, blood. up blood before she died so i got the sense that he's dying already so mm -hmm. probably yeah, he was yeah. yeah so merging so that even adds more to it the merging with this devil he would have died anyway even if he wasn't part of this larger plot and so mm -hmm. that even adds to the gravitas of the storyline and the character work and just you know just extremely uh impressive and and everything it should be mentioned here that this kid's already sold his own body part parts at the beginning oh, yeah. right balls. away he I got mean, rid he of his sold the left ball yeah yeah he got rid uh. of his left nut for sixty thousand yen he got rid of yeah. his kidney yeah. for 1.2 million his right eye for three hundred thousand yen his eye. uh yeah yeah they mentioned all the stuff that he got rid of to try to pay off his father's debt <laughs> i mean this kid yeah. is wow and I like the the play here is when Pochita ends up merging with him and he ends up he's sliced and diced. He ends up in the trash. And when the blood drips off of Denji and goes in Pochita's mouth, this ends up bonding them again. And because of that, maybe Pochita could have just went on his own, but he ended up bonding him, becomes the heart inside of Denji and has the pull string that you end up where it can activate the chainsaw man. But when he gets out of there, he doesn't have that eye patch anymore. It's completely healed him. So his body is better now. It's it's on there. And I thought that that was a pretty cool deal. And then when he does go in, he just goes to town. He kills everybody in there as chainsaw man. Like you said, he's finally able to stand up for himself with that combo of him and Pochita. And even then, it's funny because he's like, oh, man, I'm, I worked out my debt like it doesn't make sense because he doesn't have anybody to sell it to. He's killing everybody. But in my mind, he's also playing out like, yeah, they're all dead. So he didn't have to worry about it anyway. But when the woman comes in and we don't get names, really, they just come in and you end up having that as they are official devil hunters. And when they come in, there's that little thing, like you said, a little thing earlier when the one guy says to the head Yakuza, at least this little you know, group, why does he do this? What's going on? You know, he could do. And he says, no respectful devil hunter will do what they're doing for the Yakuza. They're on like a black market deal. That's why. And they're taking full advantage. It's it also ends up being almost like the company store 
you know, back in the day where they end up being able to say to Denji, OK, I'll give you this much, but you have to give me that for a finder's fee. He never ends up making. He's never going to get out of it, but he never steps up for himself. But finally, he does as the chainsaw man. That's horrific. And he just goes to town on everyone. And when this this group comes in with this woman, they just see a pile and like somebody beat us to it. And these guys are ready to probably take down Denji, but she recognizes something in him and says he smells different. He doesn't smell like human or devil. It's something between. I think that this is a person you could see by his face. And I like when well, he's and he's passing out. I mean, he is in trouble. Well, what will I eat for breakfast? Because she says, I can kill you now as a devil. You want that? I'll do that. But you can come with me as my dog. <laughs> Again, you're wondering, like, why would you do this, Denji? You just got out of that. But it, it is a little better because he says, you know, what would I have for breakfast then? And she goes down and it is toast and jam plus a bunch of things. He's like, oh, that sounds great. And he's all excited about it. And that's how it ends. And yeah, it's it's pretty good. It's a pretty good start for something. It's one of the better first chapters, I think, in, uh, you know, some of the current or at least, you know, the last bunch of years manga. But it gives you that idea. And I think that that's the strength of manga is giving you strong character work in that first chapter that you not just and I'm not saying character work as, oh, he was born here and he grew up there and he's more of the connection that you feel for these characters and you want to follow them and you want to see more of what's going on because of how nice, heroic, whatever it is, they end up being able to do that. And usually it is with, you know, you're not going to get that complex. You get one big thing, but it grabs you. And I, I think that this plays out pretty well. So yeah. what would you give it? Uh, I would give this... Uh... Well, for my first manga, I would give this a nine. I, I really enjoyed this. Yeah. Uh, a solid nine. Yeah, I'm a nine five. I really do like this. Is I read this about 20 times already. And every time I always have a smile. I'm like, oh, my. Especially, again, I've read the whole series up till now. And I end up knowing some things that happen and what these characters are. So it makes me laugh some well, of the things I, that they say or whatnot. But I, I want to quickly comment that I... Uh, Denji is so naive in, in a in a good way, but he's yeah. I mean, really this this girl that he stumbles upon who, you know, she is she thinks of him like a dog, even calls him a oh, dog, yeah. and yet all she had to do is mention that, you know, you'll be my servant, I'll feed <laughs> yeah. you. And he's all happy. Oh my god, I met somebody yeah. that'll feed me as long as and she'll even hold me too, you know. Yep. I mean, it's like I mean it's he actually uh, you know, because in, in actual fact. He was he was always treated as less than a dog in real life. I mean, the animals yeah. were treated better than him, and so uh, it's going to be interesting to see up, right? his to see his character journey as this story moves forward. Because he's so used to being less than human and being treated that way that even when he's treated like a dog, he feels like it's a dream come true because yep. it's so much better than from where he came from. And what the the greatest compliment that I can give the the writer here, this Tat, Tat, Tatsuki guy. Uh, whatever mm -hmm. Fujimoto or whatever. Uh, I mean, is that I felt that I felt this yeah. guy's. I felt his his pain and his angst and his joy and his love and his and his sacrifice mm -hmm. and his selflessness. And and again, that was just that was in the first 180 pages here. I guess uh, that that mm -hmm. I have up showing up here on on the screen. And uh, again, it's it, it's impressive. I can definitely see the attraction of manga here because. Even if I never read any more of this particular story, oh. I, I got something out of it right now. It I, I got it. There's there's some there's so many life lessons in this mm -hmm. in this chapter. I don't need to read any more, but I want to read more, and I can definitely see the appeal of manga. So I, I really appreciate Man, that's that you cool. recommend it. So yeah. nice. And and I'll tell you the idea when you said about. Uh, future state Gotham and the idea, you know, you have the pencil steel. It's weird because if you go back and look at that, to me, that just looks like a Western comic that's kind of unfinished and doesn't have color. These, they really work on, and you know, that's their thing, but you end up, these are every week. They, they do this. This is, you know, the chapter that you read when they're doing that, you have another chapter next week. They come out weekly for the most part, you know, you'll have some, you know, skip weeks or whatever, but it's mostly every week and they're able to do that. And with that, the shading, it's not just fully just pencils. There's a lot, the inks are very big in it and all that. And I think that 
what they really do center on the emotions of the characters, the facial deals and whatnot, that I think it's a little more impressive because again, these are things that I said too. I don't really like black and white deal. I can't read from right to left. And then once I tried, you get very into it. You get, you know, you, you understand it once you get that right to left. And also the art will not bother you as much for most people. Uh, also, I wanted to ask you, did you realize, and I forgot to tell you, that when you end up having flashback scenes, they end up, the page is black. The paneling is black. It's If you go back and look where you have Denji at the beginning, when he's at his dad's grave, that's a flashback, and you end up having where the borders are solid black. I really like that, and I wish that they would do that in the Western comics just to show, because sometimes it uh, you don't have to have, like, back in the day, you know, this is that or whatever. You just do that, and you know that, which is kind of a funny play because when you end up getting a volume of it, some people will look, and if you look at the, you know, the pages from the top of the volume, just closed volume, and it's all black, you're like, oh, we got a lot of flashback chapters in this one. It's kind I, of a funny I, deal, but I, 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 I never, I never saw, I never made that connection until you pointed it out. But you're absolutely yeah, I forgot right, to but... tell you that's a big thing of the, and I really like it yeah. because then you don't have to worry about it, it telling people. But that's the thing, the way that this goes anyway. You didn't really need it because you can no, see exactly. See That's exactly right. And but yeah. I think that sub. I think that probably subconsciously, I, I that 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 blackness yeah. that it 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 reinforced the, like the flashback nature of it. So I'm telling you, it's pretty cool. I, I actually really like. That's one of the things that when I first started reading, I really thought was a really cool idea, and I thought maybe they should just bring that, but. Nobody wants to take good ideas that aren't that like everybody's afraid. Oh, I can't do that because then they'll say we stole it. Ah, just use good ideas. I think it's a pretty cool deal with it. But yeah, I, I give this a nine five and I really liked it. But I'm glad that you liked it. And, you know, this was a special occasion. I said it has been a, a long while since we had a new chapter and he just came back with it. So I thought we'd mix it. And I don't want to get too over the top. Oh, my God, we're going to do manga all the time. But eventually We'll slip one in again as well and see if you like a bunch of other things. And we'll try to do like something new the next time. But yeah. that's about it, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. And uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Jim, for uh, having me, uh, ha having you join me uh, or j me joining you yeah. again and uh, putting this on our. I, I you. You're the one who's doing most of the work when we do this. I'm just sitting here yapping. You have all the, the cool things, and I really do like the way that you play out the videos. And just as a shout out, people who, you know, might be on listening on the podcast or uh, somewhere, you go in and check out Rocky's uh, YouTube channel. We'll have all that in the links yeah. as well. Because I well, think certainly, that's and, and cool. everyone watching on my YouTube channel, check out Word Science. Uh, I, I think people are, if anybody's into comic books, you, you should be subscribing to the uh, Word Science uh, DC, Word Science Marvel the podcast join the get fresh crew it's it's awesome mm -hmm. uh, i i got to yeah. give a shout out to that cuz it's it's so much fun cuz we talk comics in the slack all the time i i during the day yeah. when i'm at work i i probably spend too many often spend too much time on the slack as opposed yeah. to doing my job but <laughs> it's, i got to uh, pay the mortgage after all but you know so exactly. be it exactly <laughs> yeah one of the things i do want to point out Luke Holly would get mad if i didn't we do have a manga podcast where each day of the week we have a manga reading club one of them is chainsaw man so if you would want to listen i think right now this week we're up to chapter eight so they just kind of started so you can get and jump on and also i want to let you know rocky like you have this oversized chapter the first chapter once they go down the second chapter is usually about 30 pages then you get to most of the others being between 19 and 21. So they end up being very quick reads. But when you end up going forward, they do pack a lot of story in those that you'd be amazed. The idea of how much story progression, there's no deep compression. Like you said, they go for it. They tell because in the manga world, if you aren't doing what you're supposed to be doing, you get canned. You end up getting cut. They're very brutal with it. There's only a couple spaces, say, on the weekly Shonen Jump. They only have like 20 some deals. And if you're not doing it, if you're not popular and they have polls, they send out all these things, you will get cut and they'll bring in something else. So that's another thing that keeps them on their toes, which mm. a lot of times in the Western deal, DC, Marvel, the big two, a lot of people seem to be resting on their laurels. So I'll tell you right now, 
clone rat on that Wonder Woman book it would have oh. been gone a long time ago if that was manga. They were they would have been cut loose a long time ago. Oh man, that's uh, that's yeah. that's painful. Yeah. That's uh, that's parody. It that's is. painful. Vile yes, vile is. milk drinkers. How oh, far yeah, Wonder Woman has fallen right. now battling vile milk drinkers. I, I couldn't oh, believe when I read that, but gracious. whatever. I know. I know. <laughs> that's for other shows, right? Uh, but yeah. yeah, thanks, Rocky. Uh, right. Thanks for having me on this. I really do enjoy it. And yeah, everybody check out both of our things. I'll, I'll put stuff when I have my side of things. I'll put all the show notes and all the links to everything. So if you want to listen to more of stuff that I do, you can do that. More stuff with Rocky. And hopefully people enjoy us coming together for this. You betcha. And until next week, we'll catch you later. See ya.